Hello everyone, today's video is going to be something a little bit different, but with this being my month of celebration, it's covering a car that I've always been somewhat obsessed with. Now, the genesis of this video started about a month ago. You see, my cameraman and friend Darren is rather a fan of Mercedes, and I've never been all that in love with the brand. In fact, we were talking about what would happen if we had, you know, our lottery win money come through, and I know that Darren would be straight down to several dealers to start a big old Merc collection. But for me, there's only ever really been one Merc that I would want to part with serious money to own, and I've lusted after pretty much continuously for the last 15 years, and that is the extraordinarily rare CLK DTM. Now the CLK DTM is a rare beastie indeed, and I forgive you if you don't even know what one is, it is a version of the CLK built by HWA, Mercedes or rather AMG's in-house racing team, to celebrate the fact that they basically kicked butt at the DTM championship in Germany. And to celebrate they built in total about 180 cars, which were pretty serious, pretty hardcore, extraordinarily expensive and very special, in fact I don't believe you could buy one you simply got offered the chance to buy one. Very Ferrari, really, for a Merc. Now, if you go on the fabulous internet and you look up CLK DTM, you may find an article from Top Gear. You see, a couple of years ago, a CLK DTM was for sale. And Top Gear did a little five reasons why you should really part with about a quarter of a million pounds to buy one. Reason number five, they say, is that Jensen Button used to own one. I mean, I've never really been a fan of buying a car simply because a celebrity, even celebrity race driver, used to own one. But you see, that's not entirely accurate. Jensen Button didn't used to own one. Jensen Button owns one. This one. This is Mr. J Button Racing Driver's very own CLK DTM. It's magnificent. It's also up for sale for about two hundred and thirty thousand pounds and that is the reason why today I am afraid we are simply walking around and admiring this fantastic piece of machinery and not reviewing it. Now I've been very fortunate to be given this opportunity by a gentleman called Steve Hearn who is an old friend of the family and who through simple luck I found out was selling this car on behalf of its famous and very successful owner. Now as mentioned this was a product of HWA not actually AMG. There was indeed a CLK 63 AMG and a CLK Black. And those still command a good £80,000 or so. They are pretty serious cool cars. This one knocks those into a cocked hat. Now, Darren, if I get you to move around and get a side profile of the car, I'll try and tell the lovely viewers at home some of the things that just set this car apart. Now, of course, the biggie is up front. Under here, rather than the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated engine, which AMGs at the time had already moved on to, this stayed with the more tried and tested M113. In this configuration, it's a 5.4 litre, three valve per cylinder engine with a thumping great big supercharger nailed to the top of it. And here it produces 580 horsepower and 590 pound foot of torque. That is, for your reference, a hundred of both horsepower and torque clear of the CLK 63, and still some way clear even of the infamous Black Series. And not only that, this car is actually quite a bit lighter. It's also a hundred kilos lighter than the CLK 63. And that's thanks in no small part to the serious amount of carbon fibre on here. You see, you may notice that there's some unusual body styling on this car. It's got these pretty serious big front arches here, extended side skirts, a nice meaty rear here too. Of course you have a wider bumper at the back to accommodate it and this actually kind of small but very beautifully formed rear wing. Uh, this, 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 this and this 
and I believe the front bumper are all carbon fiber. A carbon fiber that is painted so thin that you can actually see the carbon weave straight through the paint. Very F40. Now, I know there's a couple of things you guys want to do. First off, you want to hear it, and although I don't have the keys to this car, regrettably, I did get some shots of what it sounds like earlier. So let's play that for you now. Now that beautiful noise comes courtesy of this. And one thing I can tell you is definitely not carbon fiber is this bonnet. This is still metal. You have plenty of carbon here on top of the engine and even though it hasn't been running for quite some time, it's still pretty warm in here. In fact, one of the more interesting details, Darren, if you come in here, is the massively thick belts down here. You see those? They are pretty chunky. And um, I don't know quite how much boost this thing makes or how large the supercharger unit is, but it's pretty hefty. Unfortunately, it is for that very reason that this car is still running a five-speed automatic gearbox when the regular CLK AMGs, the 63s, were already moving on to the seven-speed, I believe, MCT box. Still an auto box, but a much better, more modern one. Uh, however, changing gears in this car, I assume, must be a joy for one very simple reason indeed. And to show you that, we've got to get inside. And for me, Although the exterior of this car is pretty special, especially with these three-piece wheels, which I'm not sure I like or not. I think I'm with Doug on those ones. I think they look a, a little bit blingy and ostentatious. It's the interior of this car that is just stunning. Let's take a look. I mean, the moment you open it, your eye just does not know where to look. In fact, if I get you in here, Darren, I will go around the other side. Now your eye might be drawn to the massive carbon fiber door cards. They might be drawn to the bucket seats. They might be drawn to the huge amount of carbon in the center console, or perhaps the beautifully sized, shrunken Alcantara wrapped steering wheel. Now these paddles here are utterly gorgeous. The dials are fantastic. I particularly like the rev counter in the middle, which has a little lights to show you what you're revving to. Note also how all the switch gear in here is kind of bespoke. This stuff is all bog standard CLK. And in fact, one of the fun things about this car, like a lot of these sort of specials, is you get this mixture of totally standard, normal, off the shelf, C-class Mercedes bits mixed in with completely bespoke race grade stuff. It's really quite wonderful. Now, this kind of reminds me of a Ferrari of the period. You've got park, reverse, neutral, drive. Up here, you've got a little gear selector, which I presume is either manual or sporty or something like that. EDW, I don't know what that does. Genuinely don't know. Someone in the comments, please tell me what that actually does. However, I can tell you that this car does still have cruise control. Where are the cruise buttons? They are, of course, hidden under here. Why you'd want them there, I do not know. The pedals in this car as well are kind of standard Merc, but trimmed totally differently. And I like the fact that Mercedes have still left a stereo in here. It means that you could, in theory, use this car on a sort of nearly daily basis. Uh, these seats, by the way, I do fit in, and they are rather snug, and everything in here feels, well, quite special. But it's when you look what's behind them that you see just how amazing this thing is. There is apparently a fully integrated roll cage in this car, all neatly hidden. I mean, look at this carbon harness bar in here. This is just amazing. Huge amount of carbon in here, and it, it doesn't end here either. The car even has one last surprise for you when you decide to lift the boot lid. Now, the boot lid itself, I believe, is totally standard CLK. It is fairly light, but it may be aluminium. And you look in here, and it doesn't look like anything remarkable. That is until you lift the carpet and you realize that even the boot floor is carbon fiber and you can see that it is kind of bolted in or attached in a fairly firm way to some hinges or something at the end there. So this is no doubt actually contributing to the car's performance as well. And I do apologize for the fact that I'm not able to take this car out, but I am, to be honest, simply very grateful for the fact that I could even come and look at it so close anyway and the guys at Steve Hearn have been very nice to me for just giving me the opportunity it's um 
a rather amazing and remarkable thing. And just off camera shot, a beautiful old Bentley has even pulled up as well. There's some very, very nice stuff here. So I gotta say, it's one of these things that if I had a quarter of a million pounds to drop on a car, any car, this would definitely be up there for me. It's just full of so many special details. Even right now, I'm seeing things like the little petrol flap down here that's had to be reshaped entirely so that they could get it around these huge extended arches. But honestly, like I say, I was never really that much of a Merc fanboy of any description. If I had this amount of money to drop on a car, an SLS wouldn't do much for me. An SLR was, is, is nice, but I'd never own one. But this thing, this has always had my interest and now having been able to spend just a little bit of time with one it is properly special and it is seriously cool so i apologize again for not being able to take it out but hey i don't have the quarter million pounds to buy it in case i do break it but if you guys want to see me drive it why don't you comment below and say please let james drive the car and then maybe if we get enough people saying that perhaps i'll be able to persuade jensen to let me have a crack at his car hey we can all dream right anyway thank you all very much for watching Thank you to Steve for sorting this out for me. Really appreciate it. If you guys want to come and buy yourselves a quarter million pound Mercedes, I think you could do a lot worse than this. Or maybe if you'd have something else, tell me in the comment section below. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.